Ladies and gentlemen, let's begin into the comment video. We're going to be discussing AMD's graphics card solutions because a couple of pieces of news have popped up and are doing rounds on the internet. The first is one which I have a feeling is going to be less exciting to many of you, and that is the Fury X2, um, which AMD did supposedly put back because they were waiting for some announcements regarding VR and now of course they've popped up for example the Oculus Rift and we'll talk about the specifications of the card and some of the details which have uh, emerged in just a moment then we're going to move straight over to the Polaris because supposedly the Polaris is entering, entering excuse me the testing phase and we're starting to spot various graphics cards code names popping up in various uh, change logs but we'll go into that in just a moment. First of all, the Fury X2. So, if you've somehow missed what the Fury X2 is, it's essentially double that of a Fury X. Quite literally, it's two Fury X GPUs on the same PCB, which comes with the usual positives and drawbacks that you would associate with a dual GPU card. So, total of, four, of 8192 stream processors, that's 8192 because I screwed up, which is obviously double that of the standard Fury X, but that's because, once again, you're quite literally taking two Fury X GPUs and putting them on, on the same PCB, which naturally would also mean that you've got four gigabytes of HBM memory per GPU, and as usual with these type of cards, only four gigabytes is technically available to the game because the data is mirrored across both GPUs. This is an issue which supposedly will be fixed with DirectX 12 and Vulkan, which of course are upcoming APIs, which will replace DirectX 11, um, where data doesn't need to be 100% mirrored. There's a little bit of conflicting data of how much um, memory would be available in, let's say, a 4 gigabyte. SLI or Crossfire solution. Some are suspecting it's going to be around the 7 gigabyte or maybe 6 gigabyte mark, but obviously that's still a hell of a lot better than just giving 4 gigabytes. Regardless, essentially this is a high performance GPU and it's certainly going to find its home in certain, uh, certain PCs. In fact, the custom PC maker Falcon Northwest were demonstrating this um, inside of a new system. It's a prototype system. It's not been 100% completed yet, but as one can imagine, this is being used to power virtual reality demos. Rather interestingly, however, they were not using the standard headset, which many people are associating, associating with virtual reality. Instead, they were using the HTC Vive, which, of course, we're still waiting on the pricing confirmation with that. In fact, some rumors are putting it all the way up to $1,500, which is kind of expensive, and I have a feeling it's going to prohibit many uh, actually purchasing that. Regardless, the card was in just a 4-inch wide custom PC, which is pretty darn impressive. Do remember that, much like the Fury X, it will indeed be water-cooled, with a TDP of around 350 to 400 watts. Many are assuming it's going to be about the 375 mark, which makes sense given the level of performance and, of course, the fact that it is essentially a dual Fury X. It's going to be kind of expensive, and um, obviously we don't know the exact release date yet, as far as I'm aware. There's not been any real confirmation. I'm going to say it's probably going to be in the next month or two. They've obviously got working prototypes. The problem with that is, depending on the pricing of the card, I have a feeling many are just going to decide to kind of leave it alone. Because let's face it, with the next generation cards popping up, you may or may not really be comfortable plonking down that amount of money when we're really waiting for Pascal or, of course, the Arctic Islands, or should I say Polaris to be better, uh, to be more accurate rather. So, I did mention Polaris and we are certainly going to be discussing it in this video. So the GPUs are entering a testing phase, which is something we've kind of suspected for some time now, and indeed we've heard the code names of Ellesmere, Baffin and Greenland for quite some time and the names have been floating around the ether. Regardless, they are appearing in both HW Info 32 slash 64 and of course Ada 64. In fact, I'll read out the quote, added preliminary support for AMD Ellesmere, Baffin and Greenland. Well, pretty short, sweet and succinct, but still, 
If you've been following along with AMD's naming conventions and of course the Polaris architecture for some time, what we do know is there are at least two GPUs which have been demonstrated, which would of course be Polaris 10 and Polaris 11. We don't know exactly what the specifications of these cards are. We know one of them is a lower power solution, which is obviously fairly small, and one which is more powerful. We can probably guess that this was another one of the cards that was actually demonstrated late last year as well, although obviously I'm making some speculations there. So it kind of leads to the logical conclusion. Is it possible that Ellesmere and Baffin are related to Polaris 10 and 11 in terms of variants of the same architecture? Or is it possible that Ellesmere and Baffin are Polaris 10 and 11? So for the sake of argument, is Polaris 10 and 11 a form of architecture and then Ellesmere and Baffin are the exact code names of different variants of those GPUs or is Ellesmere directly release it, related excuse me, to Polaris 10 or is Baffin directly related to Polaris 11? Unfortunately, we don't really know. Regardless of the semantics of the naming convention, the reason that this is actually particularly important is because now that it's popping up on, for example, Ada 64, we know that there are actual engineering samples that are either out or pretty much coming out. This means that we're really close to mass production. Now, just to clarify, that does not mean, let's say for the sake of this video, that prototyping has finished and they've already sent the engineering samples out. Let's just assume that. It's not confirmed, I'm just assuming that. So that does not mean in two months time we will be seeing, you know, Polaris GPUs on the shelves. As I discussed just a few days ago in another video, it's more likely that we're seeing the mass production start rolling out over the next couple of weeks whenever that is and it will take some time for them to actually come into stores how long really depends obviously we're not even a hundred percent sure who will be the ones who are producing the chips on behalf of amd it's looking like it's going to be say samsung and if that's the case they certainly have a priority of their chip over there on their chips in their production than what AMD would do because obviously Samsung are producing their own components for their own uses as well. But what's probable at this point is that about six to eight months into the future we will certainly start to see the GPUs which once again goes pretty much hand in hand with the other announcements that AMD and some of their partners have made uh, regarding the release dates of their GPUs and should make for a fairly interesting autumn slash very early winter battle with NVIDIA, considering, once again, that's what NVIDIA are telling us that they are aiming for with their own release windows with, of course, Pascal. It's kind of an interesting situation then for PC gamers. As I alluded to at the start of this very video, you're at this really bastard area of time where if you're plonking down a lot of money for a GPU, it does it sound like you know the next generation is around the corner but on the other hand six months or eight months passes really quickly so you're in that kind of weird middle ground i guess you could say so once again um, all we can do is wait unfortunately have to say that i'm really looking forward to this generation of graphics cards probably more so than what i was any others in recent memory if i'm totally blunt with you i mean maxwell i was kind of looking forward to the 700, the 600 range from NVIDIA for sake of argument, I was kind of excited about. I mean, the last cards that I was really like, oh my god, about was probably the Radeon 9 700s, 800 Pros, the NVIDIA GTX 880, and maybe AMD's first iteration of GCN architecture as well, the 7970 cards, because obviously there were 
really different and they offered some really good price performance ratio and there were a couple of others obviously I was literally foaming at the mouth when I was first hearing details of the Voodoo 4s and Voodoo 5 cards which kind of turned into a bit of a letdown 3D effects why didn't you put in hardware TNL anyway I digress hopefully you've enjoyed the video I'll see you soon take care bye for now